Hey what's going on YouTube and welcome to another League of Legends Season 7 Champion Guide. In this one we're going to cover Top Lane Swain, the Master Tactician. The early bird guts the worm. Swain's a champion with really strong AoE damage per second and he also has really strong crowd controls from both the slow from his Q and the snare from his W. He gets really strong sustain from his ultimate and when he finally acquires it sustaining in the lane isn't usually going to be an issue. He's then a champion with pretty strong snowball potential and he is naturally tanky because we do go for a rod of ages and of course you have all that sustain from your ultimate. Swain finally is a really strong pocket pick if you do have a full AD team you can always pick Swain and add some nice ability power into a team comp. Swain however is a champion that really lacks mobility he doesn't have anything in his kit at all that gives you movement speed or a gap creator so you're gonna kinda get ganked a lot. The good thing however, if you do properly ward your lane, if somebody comes in for a gank you can easily slow them or root them. Swain then has a pretty damn mediocre early game because you are a very mana hungry champion and you really need your ultimate to get at least some sustain in that lane phase. Swain finally is a champion that does have some pretty solid damage but unfortunately it mostly comes from damage over time abilities so therefore you're not bursty at all. With that being said if you get your combo off on a squishy target in the late game you're still gonna kill them in about 2 seconds. For your masteries there's only really one option and it's to go 18 ferocity and 12 resolve grabbing deathfire touch as your keystone mastery. The deathfire touch keystone works incredibly well with your damage over time abilities and it's basically required. Swain is then of course a champion who's going to heal himself a lot throughout a game and runic armor is also required because of your ultimate. It will really increase your sustain and these two masteries here are why we end up going for that 18 ferocity and 12 resolve. For your runes you'll want to go for magic penetration reds, armor yellows, scaling magic resist blues, and ability power quints. All of these runes are basically must grabs on Swain but the scaling magic resist is interchangeable. If you were against a hard AP matchup then you may want to get flat magic resist instead just to be a little bit tankier right from the beginning. If you weren't worried about magic resist at all then you could go for scaling cooldown reduction as well just to get some more in your build. Both are fantastic alternatives but usually I'll go for the scaling magic resist. For my summoner spells in the top lane I'll usually go for flash and teleport. As we've quickly touched on you are a very immobile champion and flash will be able to save you over and over in just a single game. Teleport is then great for ganking other lanes and it will allow you to split push and still make it to team fights and objectives. Now instead of that teleport you could go for ignite instead if you did want some added kill pressure. With the Deathfire Touch Keystone and your damage over time abilities you can do a surprising amount of damage when you add Ignite on top of it and grab kills even if people flash away. Now Ghost is a decent alternative with flash as well if you do want a ton of mobility but usually I'll only save that for the mid lane I don't take it too much in top. Now let's look at those abilities starting with your passive Carrion Renewal. Now there's not too much to say about this passive here, as I'm sure you can tell every time you get a last hit you glow kinda blue for a second which signifies the fact that you get a little bit of mana. Even though you're a mana hungry champion as long as you're properly getting last hits you should have at least somewhat of a mana pool. If you do get an enemy champion takedown you then get an additional 9% mana which is great in teamfights. Swain's Q is to Crepify and it's definitely one of your best abilities. This ability is pretty simple, Swain commands Beatrice to fly to the target location and she remains there for 4 seconds. Beatrice has a 325 range and anything inside will be attacked. It deals a lot of damage against minions and will execute them if they are below 10 health. Now this ability is also great on champions because it will proc your deathfire touch and it does a lot of damage as well. Not to mention it also slows the target by up to 40%. This ability is finally fantastic against melee champions because they will have to go near minions, you can drop this bird and it will attack them doing a lot of harassment. Beatrice does also prioritize the target of your torment so make sure you hit somebody with your E ability if you want Beatrice to attack that target. Swain's W is never move and it's your AoE rooting ability. This ability has a 900 range and after a 0.875 second delay anything within the 125 radius will be rooted. The root duration starts at 1 second but it does gain a quarter second every time you put a point in it ending up at 2 seconds. So this ability obviously is great because it is an AoE root and it can be used offensively to get kills or defensively to help peel for carries. You can then even combine this with your Q ability to easily farm minions. Chunk down the minions with your W ability then use Beatrice to clean them all up. Swain's E ability is Torment and it's a pretty decent damage over time. This ability is a point and click which gives you some nice reliable damage. When used on the enemy champion it will damage them over 4 seconds and Swain's damage against them will be amplified by 
Therefore, when you are going for an all-in, you want to use this pretty early in your combo, just to make sure you get a bit more damage out. Although it is a pretty good ability, generally we're going to be maxing it last, because our Q does a lot more damage, and our W does have a scaling root duration. Swain's ultimate is Ravenous Flock, and it gives us some nice damage, but also a ton of sustain. So this ultimate is a toggle ability, and it does have a 20 second cooldown, so you have to be very careful when you do actually activate it, because the cost is rather high as well. When activated though, Ravens will shoot out, attacking the target, and you will do a bunch of damage of course, but also heal yourself, which also works on minions. That of course means if you do dip low in health, you can sustain yourself rather high off just minions, but you do of course get more health off of champions. If the enemy champion does go back to base, you can quickly hop into this form and push the minion wave under tower so they miss a lot of XP and gold. At this point, you can back him by yourself and make it back before the minions are anywhere near your tower. For your skill order, you first of course want to start by putting a point into your ultimate whenever you can at 6, 11, and 16. We then want to focus on maxing our Q ability as quickly as possible because it does do a lot of harassment on the enemy champion and it also last hits rather easily. Now you can then either max your W or your E ability second, but generally I always do my W because I do really like that increased root duration. I then of course save my E ability for last because the main thing you want it for is just that 20% increased damage and you get that no matter what rank the ability is. For your all in combo you first want to start by landing your W on the enemy champion to snare them. At this point you'll want to use your torment on the enemy champion so they take 20% increased damage and follow up with your decrepify to do more damage and slow the enemy champion. At this point you can hop in your ultimate form with your ravenous flock and do damage that way and sustain at the same time and make sure you add in auto attacks while you do wait for your ability cooldowns. Here's what your combo will look like in full speed. Farming is very easy to do on Swain because of your AoE kit and your Decrepify. Decrepify is a great part of Swain's kit because you can use it to easily last hit minions and harass the enemy champion at the same time. It's then also incredible for zoning the enemy champion because they won't be able to come into the zone because if they do, they'll obviously take damage. They're obviously not going to want to do that, which can give you a CS lead. When you combine Decrepify and your Never Move, you can easily bring down entire minion waves when you have some points in your abilities. Of course this will get even easier when you do have your ultimate. As soon as the enemy top laner backs, you'll want to make sure you shove the minion wave under tower. You can use your ravenous flock to push even quicker. Your primary trading tools throughout that lane phase is going to be Decrepify and your Torment. Against melee champions, your Decrepify is very easy to harass with because they'll have to come into the minions to CS and as long as you place Decrepify near them, they will take damage. When the enemy champion has abilities in cooldown, feel free to start auto attacking and put your torment on them as well for that increased 20% damage. You'll usually want to save your never move for a gank setup or for when the enemy engages onto you so you can kite with the crepify and sustain yourself with your ravenous flock. However, of course, don't be afraid to use it if you want to go for an all in. In team fights, you'll either want to get onto the enemy backline or protect your carries with the peel you can provide from your decrepify and never move. This will really depend on your and your enemy's team comp, but generally I like to land my never move on the enemy backline carries and use my decrepify to help hold them in the area so my carries can dive onto them. You'll then also want to try to soak some damage at the same time to protect your carries. You're a very hard to bring down champion when you have all of your items and ravenous flock activated for some extra sustain. Don't forget to be in your ultimate form when you do go into Zonia's so you do gain health when you are still in that ultimate form. Now I'm going to cover some hard matchups, and first up is Yasuo. So the first reason he's rather difficult is because of his passive shield from Way of the Wanderer. This shield makes him really effective in trades, and you're not usually going to be able to get through it. Yasuo then has a ton of mobility and damage from Sweeping Blade. He'll be able to get on top of you rather easily, and then all in you from the rest of his abilities. Against Yasuo, you need to rush that Rod of Ages and your Zonias, and save your W ability to save your life. Next here is Riven, and the first region she's rather hard is the shield from her Valor. Whenever you put a damage over time ability on her, she can activate this shield and take no damage at all. This also gives her a nice amount of mobility, but she gets even more from Broken Wings. This ability will add a ton of damage and mobility, and when you add in her stun from her W and her ultimate, you're going to die. Yet again, get a nice health pool and Azonias, and use your W ability defensively. Next here we have Fiora, and one of the main regions she is rather hard is her Riposte. This ability will block your snare, and if you are in range, it will also stun you, which is going to get you killed. Her lunge then makes her a very mobile champion, and getting onto you will not be an issue for her at all. 
Against her, I would recommend not really using your W ability offensively, because if it does miss, she's usually going to engage on you, and you're not going to be able to do much about it. For the fourth hard matchup, we have Kennen, and keep in mind, there are definitely more hard matchups than these four here. So the first reason Kennen's going to be a hard matchup is all the mobility he gets from Lightning Rush. He'll be able to use this to dodge your W, and then engage on you at the same time. Now the combination of the rest of Kennen's kit is what makes him a strong champion as well. When you combine them, they do an absolute ton of damage and stun you at the same time, which makes his all-ins pretty damn effective. Try to poke him down as much as you can, but make sure you hold on to your W. So now let's hop into that item build. For your normal start, you'll want to go for a Doran's Ring, Health Potions, and a Warding Totem. One good alternative would be the Dark Seal, a refillable potion, and a Warding Totem. For your core build, we have the Rod of Ages, Sork Shoes, and Azonias. Now you could also go for the Hextech GLP 800, but this item is not that great on Swain in my opinion, but I do see it from time to time. The reason I don't really go for it is because the Rod of Ages will outscale this item in just 5 minutes, and it's a much better item just to begin with in the first place. The Zonius is fantastic because with all of your AoE damage over time abilities, you can activate them all at the same time, activate Zonias, and still do a lot of damage. Sork Shoes are definitely my favorite and I almost always pick them up in my core build, but you could get Ionians if you did want 10% CDR, Merc Treads if you were against a very high AP and CC heavy team, or of course Ninja Tabbies against a high AD team. For your item pool, we first have the Spirit Visage, which is an item I pretty much always grab on Swain. It increases your healing received, which works great with your ultimate, and it can really heal you quite a bit. Of course you also get health, magic resist, and cooldown reduction, making it a fantastic item anyways. To increase your health pool even farther, you could get a Rhylice Crystal Scepter or a Leandris. The Rhylice is great because you will be doing an AoE slow when you are in your ultimate form, and Leandris is also really solid because the burn goes great with the damage over time you already have. Abyssal Scepter is then a fantastic item as well because it really increases your damage, but gives you magic resist at the same time. Of course, also 10% CDR. In the later game, you may also want to pick up a Void Staff for some magic penetration against high MR teams. If you are going for a hard carry build, you could also get the Rabadon's Death Cap for mass ability power. One final one I basically never take on Swain, but it is viable, would be the Morello Nomicon. Some mana return and 20% CDR, a pretty solid item, but if I do grab it, it's usually going to be on mid swing. But anyways, for that normal full build, we'll take our core build, add that Spirit Visage, a Rhylice Crystal Scepter, and a Void Staff. We're going to be rather tanky since we will have a high health pool, a lot of nice armor from the Zonias, and some really solid magic resist from the Spirit Visage. It's a very solid full build, and pretty much the one I pick up all the time. If you instead needed to hard carry, you would take your core yet again, get that Abyssal Scepter, Rabadon's Death Cap, and a Void Staff. You'll have a lot more ability power in this build, but the trade-off is, you'll be a hell of a lot squishier. But that, ladies and gentlemen, covers everything I've got for Top Lane Swain in Season 7. For more of my content, you guys can find my social media links down in the video description below, and I do do Riot Point giveaways on my Twitter, so that's one you guys should definitely check out. But other than that, thank you guys a ton for checking out the video, I hope you guys did enjoy it and you found something useful, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.